Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how the lateral resistance affects the turning circle of a vessel. So I will explain what is lateral resistance, how it acts on the different parts of the vessel, how it affects the turning of a vessel in general, and then I'm going to take the example of a loaded tanker in deep water approaching at a certain speed. And by showing you drawings of the turning circle diagram, I will show you what are the impacts of the lateral resistance on the advance and the transfer, the drift angle and the tactical diameter of a turning circle. To help with your understanding, I will use animations and explain the concept in stages. So a slow understanding will help you to not only understand the concept, but retain it for a longer time. Should we get started? So in the first slide that you will see, you will see a ship that is stopped and dead in the water. You will assume that the ship is about 30,000 30, tons of displacement. It is on even keel and calm conditions. There is no tide, no strong winds flowing. So this is the vessel and the vessel's uh, pivot point will be located normally what it is about one third or one fourth length from of the vessel so it is located uh, from the forward part of the vessel at about one fourth the length of the vessel so this is a normal vessel here right now from this stage here and uh, let's assume that this vessel is now uh, there's a swept track so what is a swept track the swept track is a track that uh, the sides of the vessels will make it's like a virtual track that i can show you this is the track about which the vessel will try to turn about. So this is in terms, it, this is with respect to the breadth of the vessel, of course. This is on the side, it's a swept track. So if I'm trying to show a swept track, this will be in correspondence with the breadth of the vessel. It, it the, This track basically uh, is uh, laid along the breadth of the vessel. So if I'm trying to make a turn here, let me see what is the impact of the lateral resistance on this turn. So at this stage here, will apply a rudder hard to starboard. And here we will assume that the vessel is of course going ahead and I have applied the rudder hard to starboard. So uh, an ahead movement is there and the rudder is hard to starboard. Now, when I say it's going ahead, it could be anything. It could be a dead slow ahead, it could be slow ahead, it could be half ahead or it could be full ahead. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, it's going ahead, that is the important point. So when the vessel is moving ahead, and the pivot point is located from the forward part of the vessel at about one fourth the length of the vessel and that is the current situation. Now at this stage I will apply a rudder hard to starboard and see what happens next. So as you can see here uh, as I put the rudder hard to starboard of course the vessel will start turning towards starboard and as the ship is driving forward and uh, this initial forward movement is uh, there is some resistance to it the vessel will face some resistance because uh, when the vessel was moving, it had a certain momentum. Now this momentum results in a certain inertia of the ship. So if you don't know what inertia is, inertia is a state uh, of, a of a, any object. It is a state of an object unless it is acted upon by an ex external force. So if a ball is rolling on the ground, it will keep rolling at that speed unless you act upon a force. If you kick it, it will start going in the other direction. So the vessel has some inertia with the initial movement. Now, as I give the hard over starboard, it is turning but there is some initial resistance because of the inertia that the vessel had initially. All right. Now here uh, the vessel is of course uh, has some, some resistance and because of the resistance you can see there is uh, this resistance is developed on the bow of the vessel. You can see I have shown the resistance, the initial resistance with those plus signs at the bow of the vessel. And this is because of course the water movement and the movement of the vessel with respect to the water around it. Now uh, here the vessel is turning and uh, at the end of the ship, it's, it's a good lever. So there's a good pivot point here about which it is turning. And this sets in slightly earlier. So because of this resistance now, you can see the pivot point shifts aft. So this is kind of resistance that builds up. So when the vessel is going ahead and from the ahead, when it starts to go astern, the pivot point shifts aft, right? Because the vessel is going astern. Now this resistance that acts on the bow of the vessel uh, is a, a similar effect on the vessel because of which the vessel's pivot point moves at about uh, it moves back uh, from uh, so from the bow you can say it moves back to a length of about one eighth of the length of the vessel from the bow so initially the pivot point was at about one fourth the length from the bow 
but now it is about one eighth the length of the bow. Now this is an important thing to know because with the shifting of the pivot point, the lever, the lever uh, that acts on the ship or that works with the ship because of the turn that helps the ship to turn also gets impacted. So when the ship's speed builds up, as you can see, the propeller is now releasing water and the ship's build speeds up, it builds up speed. The water resistance ahead of the ship uh, also builds up and it balances the forward power and pushes the pivot point back a further. So at a steady speed while turning, the final position of the pivot point somehow comes out to be about half the length of the vessel from the bow. Now with the turning lever thus reduced, the rudder force now becomes less efficient. Now as a ship commences to turn, you can see the lateral resistance builds up on the side of the ship as it provides a more surface area. You can see the lateral resistance builds up here. Right. So as the ship commences to turn and thereafter for the duration of a turn, the ship is now sliding sideways through the water. Right. And this results in the large buildup of the water resistance on the side that I've shown you here through the plus signs all the way down the ship's side. And this continuously opposes the rudder force. Because of the surface area that it provides now, you're trying to turn to starboard and the lateral resistance is building up on the port side here, you can see. So it continues to oppose the rudder force. And this is referred to as a lateral resistance. It resists the vessel from turning. And since the pivot point is also shifted aft, it goes out to weigh about half the length of the vessel. Uh, and the turning lever is reduced. It restricts the turn of the vessel. It slows down the turn of the vessel. So this is a lateral resistance and this is the impact it has on the turning of the vessel. Now I'll show the same impact of it through a turning circle diagram where I'll show you the effect of the lateral resistance on the advance and the transfer of a vessel in a turning circle diagram. So you can see here the drift angle. This is showing the drift angle as well. So the drift angle, if you don't know what it is, the drift angle is the angle that the ship's fore and aft line makes with the line that is tangent to the turning circle. So you can see the drift angle pretty much determines where the head of the vessel will be, how the vessel will be headed with the turning circle diagram and how, how, how short the turn will be, how, how small the turning circle will be. So you can see here because of the resistance it builds up, the drift angle starts to become more and more. The vessel's bow starts to go out of the turning circle, making the turning circle bigger. And I'll show you the example in the next slide. You'll get an idea of what I was talking about. So in this slide here, you can see this is a turning circle diagram without the turning circle, of course. So you on the X axis, of course, you have the transfer in cables and on the Y axis, you have the advance in cables. So you can see five cables marked there and four cables here. So the indi each individual cable is marked on the scale here. And I'll show you the impact this lateral resistance has on a turning circle. And I'll show you two uh, turning circles and how one differs from the other. All right, so we'll continue with the same example of a ship. Uh, this is the ship. It has about 30,000 tons of dead weight. Uh, it's about 170 meters in length. This is a tanker vessel, which is fully loaded and it is in deep waters. It is not yet in shallow waters. I'll, I'll take the example of shallow waters in a separate video as well. And let's assume that the approach speed of this vessel is about six knots. All right. So this vessel, it continues turn at a constant RPM for a, say a slow ahead speed uh, where the forces are balanced to give a turning circle as I will show you now. So this is the kind of a turning circle. You can see that it initially goes on an advance and then the vessel, if it has to turn by 90 degrees, uh, this is where the transfer will be. And then the vessel will turn further by 180 degrees. If I give a rudder hard over to starboard here, the vessel then goes on, turns 270 degrees and further to 360 degrees. So you can see here the advance and the transfer, you can measure it from the scale. Uh, so this is like a hard over. So in this case, I gave the rudder hard over to starboard. So 35 degrees, let's say 30 to 35 degrees hard over to starboard. And you can measure the advance and transfer on the scale on the Y axis and X axis. You can measure the advance and transfer here. Now, by comparison, if I say looking at the same ship and I, I, I make a turn, but I give less rudder. If I give a less rudder to contract for the lateral resistance, you will see how the turning circle becomes much larger. So you can see here, the turning circle becomes much larger. I know the circle is not very pretty looking. You will say, Sam, uh, the circle should have been exactly circular. Uh, I'll be very honest. The circle is drawn circular in every turning circle diagram, but in reality, it looks pretty much like this. It's not a perfect circle. But anyhow, let's assume this is a good circle. And uh, you can see here, in one case, I gave the rudder hard over to starboard 
to counteract for the lateral resistance and of course um, because the lateral resistance is pretty high i have to give it hard over to starboard and the turning circle is much smaller the advance and the transfer is much lesser when the rudder is hard to starboard but if i gave only rudder 20 degrees to starboard which is the case of the bigger curve uh, it may not be enough uh, or it will have a sluggish response on the lateral resistance of a vessel that builds up when the vessel is trying to turn so in this case because the rudder was only 20 degrees to starboard you can see the turning circle is much larger than the other turning circle which was due to a hard over to starboard so you can see the different stages here these are the different stages when the vessel turned by 180 degrees 270 degrees and 360 degrees you can clearly see a difference here the turning circle is much larger here so here you can make a comparison and you can see the impact that the turning circle has on the uh, or rather the lateral resistance has on the turning circle of a vessel and if you don't give enough uh, enough hard over or enough rather enough helm uh, then it will definitely have an impact so of course uh, this has an importance in the practical sense because like i said let's say you're trying to conduct a rescue operation you're trying to turn the vessel go back to your original position so you're carrying out a williamson turn let's say it's important so here it becomes very important it becomes of very paramount importance to know this uh, when you're carrying out a certain a large turn especially in areas where there are strong tides uh, or, or you know so it does not improve the turning ability so to know about the lateral resistance becomes very important to understand the maneuvering especially during emergency operations when the rescue of a person is dependent on it and you can see how the lateral resistance has to be counteracted by the appropriate helm uh, so that you can have a much smaller uh, turning circle so of course uh, you need about so you need a much larger rudder force uh, to counteract for you all right so i'll talk more about this i don't want to make my videos too long uh, and i will try to draw the animations uh, and i will show you what happens uh, to the turning circle in shallow water we'll talk about uh, this topic more in my future videos so i'll stop the video now and thanks for watching guys